Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Freedom Friday. Let's go ahead and start out with prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, to just give this time to you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the privilege and honor to be able to uh, speak about your word, Father, to talk with brothers, my brothers and sisters, my family, Lord, your sons and daughters about your word, Father, your promises, Father, and how amazing you are. Thank you, Lord, for the promises that you give us today, that you give us in your word, Lord. And I pray, Lord, today that uh, we may focus, we choose to focus on, on your word, Lord, and just how amazing you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. About two weeks ago, I was in North Carolina, and I did a message on getting out of the pit. I don't know if you watched it, but in it, I gave a brief testimony about uh, one time in North Carolina many years ago, like 25, 26 years ago, uh, when I actually had a, a pistol in my hand and I was about to shoot myself. And uh, it was spurred on because Teresa and I had taken vacation about two weeks ago. We took a trip up to North Carolina and I saw the actual spot. I saw the actual location, the actual bench where I was sitting when I did this. And what did I do in that moment, uh, just to bring you up to speed? Uh, what I did in that moment is I, I cried out to God. I was at a very, I don't think I could have been at a lower point in my life. When you're considering taking your life, first of all, it's, you know, at that time, it's probably the most selfish and self-centered thing you can do because you're not thinking of anybody else, but you're only thinking of yourself. And I, and I confess that, that at that time, I was very selfish and self-centered to be, to be considering that. But at the time, you're not thinking about that. You're not in your right mind. Anybody who's thinking about taking their life is, is not in their right mind and they need help. So at that moment, what did I do? I cried out into God. And that's what that teaching was two weeks ago when I talked about getting out of the pit. I cried out to God. And when you're at your lowest point, and I, I tried to get to you, that when you're at your lowest point in your life, when you're at the, the pit, when you're in a pit of hell, which we talked about today, which we're going to talk about today, uh, when you're in a pit of hell and you can sink no deeper, that there's a, there's a heartfelt cry uh, from your from your there's a heartfelt cry to God that saying, "Save me, help me," because if I go one step further, I'm not either not going to be here because I'm going to be dead, or there is no other place to go because you're the lowest you're the lowest place that you have ever been in your life. And the Lord, when you cry out to God in that fashion with a sincere desire and cry for help, that the Lord hears you. And we're going to look at that today. We're actually going to look at Jonah today. And I, I want to apologize to you because two weeks ago when I taught that in North Carolina, I said, I think we're going to, I said at the end of that teaching, I said, I think we're going to consider on the, or we're going to consider we're going to continue teaching about crying out for help, and we're going to talk about again this next week. But I didn't do that last week, so I, I apologize to you. Uh, and so I, I want to, the Lord put that on my heart this week, that I want to continue in talking about this. So how are we going to continue with this? Today we're going to talk about Jonah. All right, we're going to talk about Jonah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing short book, four chapters long in the Old Testament, and I believe that, you know, it's believed that Jonah actually wrote this about himself. And so he wrote about the things that happened and, and the mistakes he made and what he did and how he cried out to God. And from literally a, a fish's or a whale's belly and um, God answered him. So let, let's let's get into Jonah and we're going to talk about this. Not Noah, but Jonah. <laughs> For some odd reason, I seem to mix those up here and there. Uh Book of Jonah, verse one or uh, chapter one. Now the word of the Lord came to. We're gonna kind of go over. I'm gonna go over chapters one and two and a little bit of three, but chapters one and two and three. And I'm gonna briefly summarize this for you. So chapter one says the word of the Lord came to Jonah, uh, and it said, "Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for the wickedness, for their wickedness has come up before me." So Jonah was an established prophet. Evidently, he had done work for the Lord before, because back in 2 Kings, I, th I believe it's 2 Kings, that it, it, it talks about the prophet Jonah also. So he was, he was an established prophet for the Lord. So he had done things for the Lord before. So 
the word of the Lord came to Jonah and said, Arise, go to Nineveh, uh, that great wicked city, right? And what's God say? God says, um, For their wickedness has come, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now, Nineveh, Nineveh was, which is located in modern day Mosul, Iraq, Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, and this was a massive city. Some scholars believe it was like 55 miles around it in circumference. It took them three days to cross it by journey. So why, why did Jonah... Now let's move on to the next verse, and that'll explain it. Verse number 3, chapter 1, verse 3. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it, to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. I think this is funny because Jonah knew Jonah knew the Lord. He knew that he was omnipresent, that he could be, you cannot escape. Psalm 139 says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I send into the heavens, you are there. If I descend into the depths, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle on the far sides of the sea, even there your right hand shall hold me and uh, your right hand shall hold me and guide me. So Jonah knew he couldn't escape the Lord. So what was he doing? He thought he could, or he was just being disobedient. Basically he was saying, no, Lord, I'm not going to do this. Um, I believe there's been plenty of things in my life where I've known the Lord wanted me to do something and I, and I didn't want to do them or I just plain was disobedient. But praise God that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. It means that your gifts and your callings and what he's called you to do uh, he doesn't change his mind about it. You may lose a, a little bit of the timing, but God God is, when you repent of that, God is a restorer of all things. And he, he restores things and he redeems the time that you've lost. But your purpose, your gifts, your purpose, your calling will never, God will never change that. So, so why did Jonah say, no, Lord, I ain't doing this? Because for one, Nineveh was, like I said, the capital of the Assyrian Empire. And the Assyrians didn't like the Israelites. They wanted to wipe out the Israelites. So in essence, if Jonah went and cried out against Nineveh and caused Nineveh to repent, and God had mercy on him, uh, the Assyrians were their enemies, were the Israelites' enemies. And I think actually like 40-something years after Jonah did this, the, the Assyrians actually invaded, <coughs> excuse me, the Assyrians actually invaded Israel and wiped them out or uh, did something to them. So basically, Jonah would be going to correct his enemy. He wanted to see him wiped out. So he told God, no, Lord, I don't want to do this. So Jonah ran from the Lord. He, he went down to Joppa, which is on the coast of Israel. It's in modern-day present Tel Aviv. And he booked a flight. He booked a flight. Yeah, Jonah booked a flight. Jonah, Jonah paid a fare. He found a boat that was going to Tarshish. Tarshish is on the modern-day, they believe it's on the modern-day coast of Spain. So you would go all the way straight west to, across the Med into Spain. So he says, I'm out of here. I ain't doing this, Lord. So he go, gets on a ship, and he goes down. Once, once the ship takes off, ships don't take off. Well, he didn't book a flight. Ships don't take off. So the ship set sail for Tarshish. And it says in verse um, 5 or 4, Then the Lord sent a great storm because Jonah had done this, because Jonah was on a ship. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship and laid down and was fast asleep. There had been times in my life that when I was going through uh, large bouts of severe depression and during these times that I chose to do the wrong things in my life. Therefore, I was reaping what I had sown by the bad decisions in my life, that depression and, and mental illness had come upon me because of the choices that I made in my life, that I was, let, I was letting sin into my life. Not because of a punishment from God, but just because of the fact that um, if you thrust your hand into a, a fire full of hot coals, it's going to be burned. The Lord doesn't want you to do things like this. And he even tells you, son, don't stick your hand into the fire because you're going to burn it. But then again, when we make bad choices and then say, I'm going to do it anyways, we stick our hand into the fire, then you know what? You're going to get burned. So Jonah made bad choices and consequences. Oh, back up. So there have been times that um, when I made bad decisions, that seems like sometimes that you go to sleep and you just uh, forget about things of the world. But you know what? You have when you wake up, the things are still there. So you have you have to make a choice and, and face these things and correct and do the right thing and cry out to God and do the right thing 
so that, that we can get you out of these places, out of these pits of hell that you're in. So you make a heartfelt cry to God and it will get you out of the pit of hell that you're in, no matter where you're at. Um, so Jonah was fast asleep and the captain came to him, basically said, man, what are you doing asleep? Pray to your God, whoever you pray to, and cry out to him and maybe he will save us. So the, the crew cast lots. I can't really explain that, sorry. So the crew, the crew of the ship cast lots, and the lots pointed to Jonah that he was the cause of this. So they came to Jonah and said, basically, who are you? Why are you the cause of this? So Jonah said, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then, verse 10, then the men were exceedingly afraid, and they said to them, why have you done this? Why were the men, these pagans on the ship, who they prayed to their own gods, they weren't believers, why were the men exceedingly afraid? Because they had heard, they had heard about things that the Lord had done. They had heard about things that the Lord had done. They heard about the God of the Israelites and, and the, the amazing, the awe-inspiring, the, the awesomeness of this God that he had done. So, so they said, so what was a, what was a cure for this? So Jonah said, pick me up, throw me into the sea, and the storm will stop. So what did the men do, the pagans, the unbelievers that were on the ship? They actually prayed to the Lord, to the one true God. They prayed to the Lord and cried out. They cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. And do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. Then the men feared the Lord. Uh, so they picked up Jonah and they threw him into the sea in a, in a storm stopped and instantly ceased. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. So unbelievers, so even in your disobedience, you know what, even when you disobe disobedience, so even in your disobedience, when you disobey the Lord and you don't do what the Lord calls you to do, He can still use you, right? So don't give up hope. Never stop giving up hope. Don't get to that, when you get to that pit in your life, I don't want you to get that pit in your life, but when you get in that pit of hell, you know, God still uses you. God still used Jonah when he disobeyed them to cause these men to seek the Lord, to pray to the Lord, to believe in God. They prayed to them and they believed in him. So he still used you. So here's the chapter I really want to focus on. Chapter two, Jonah chapter two. Jonah cries out to God. So in chapter two, it says, the Lord prepared a great fish, a huge fish, fish, whale, whatever it is. It was something big enough to swallow Jonah. So the Lord, uh, the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And the fish swallowed Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and nights. And Jonah prayed. If you skip ahead to verse, verse 7 of chapter 2. This is where Jonah came to himself. So Jonah's in the belly of this fish, okay? Jonah's in his belly. He's being slowly digested. There's seaweed, the Bible says there's seaweed and weeds wrapped around his head. It's probably pitch black, it's slimy, it's cold. He can't see anything. He's in the belly of this fish for three days and three nights. And Jonah, in verse seven, if you can see where Jonah came to himself, he came to his senses. He came to himself and said, I can sink no more. I'm fixing to be digested to death by this fish. I'm in the belly of this whale, this fish, and I'm going to be digested. It's just, uh, I think he probably would have rather drowned than be digested. So he comes to his senses and he cries out to God. Verse 7, chapter 2, verse 7 says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. When my soul fainted within me, when he came to the end of himself and said, Lord, I'm in a pit. And this is a pit he was in. And then if you bounce back up to verse 2, it says, And Jonah said when he was in the belly, or let's go to verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. For those of you that think that you're in this pit, because I did this to myself, that the Lord's not going to answer me. I put myself in a pit. Yes, you probably did. Just when I was sitting on that bench in North Carolina with a pistol in my head, head with a pistol in my hand about to shoot myself, I did this to me. 
I caused this to happen to me. So for those of you who think that I did this to myself, so I have to suffer this punishment, I have to do this. No, wrong. Back up, put it in reverse, cry out to God, stop, don't give up hope. Don't give up hope, cry out to God and say, Lord, confess to the Lord, Lord, I did this, I did to myself. My simple, I can remember when I was sitting on that bench with that pistol, I was sobbing, I was weeping. And my cry to God was the fact that, you know, my prayer was, Lord, help me, help me, Lord, save me. That's, that's all I remember. That's all my prayer was, Lord, help me, help me. And you know what? He did. He saved me. Okay, I came to my senses and he saved me. And I came to my senses and I stood up and I and I actually know what I did is I had an urge to call I had an urge to call somebody, a friend, a fellow believer. I had an urge to call him and I called him and then he sent someone to come get me. Okay? He sent someone to come get me. And so I called out to God and he saved me when I caused my problems. So don't think that you can't call out to God when you cause your problems, no matter where you are. If you're sitting in prison, uh, if you're sitting in a, I don't know where you are in your life. If you're sit, if you're at the lowest point in your life, you can cry out to God and he will save you. He will hear your prayer. So let's continue on with this. Uh, Jonah says from the fish's belly, out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. Basically, Sheol, I think I pronounced that right, is another word for hell. Out of the belly of hell I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet, <clears throat> Jonah was in a pit of despair. He says, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Jonah repented of what he did. He repented of what he did. Lord, I caused this. I was disobedient. And he, Jonah made a choice. He said, I will look again toward your holy temple. I will cry out to you. Um, because Jonah said, the waters, in verse 5, the waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought me up, uh, in verse 6, the end of verse 6, he says, Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. The Lord, He cried out to the Lord, the Lord heard him, and he saved him. The Lord spoke to this fish, and the fish vomited, through, he threw up Jonah onto dry land. The Lord saved him, he brought him back to dry land, and he saved him. Okay? There's a... So, if you can just use your imagination for a bit and imagine that that it wasn't Jonah wasn't in the belly of a whale. He wasn't in a spacious room, a spacious hotel inside the belly of the fish, right? Probably it was just big enough to hold him. It was pitch black, slimy, cold, seaweed. It was just. He thought it was hell. Like he said, he'd probably rather drown to death than be digested to death, to death in this whale. And he cried out to God and he saved him. So let's let's pick it up from here and we'll we'll bring it to a close. So the fish threw up Jonah onto dry land. He beached him, threw threw up Jonah onto dry land. So Jonah is alive. Verse or chapter three, chapter three. Verse 1, now the Lord, <laughs> I just think this is funny, I'm sorry. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it, the message that I tell you. Go to Nineveh, it didn't change, his calling, what God told him to do didn't change. He said, Arise, go to Nineveh, and preach to it, call out to it the words that I tell you. So his calling didn't change. What does Jonah do this time? Does Jonah get on a ship and flee again? No. Jonah, Jonah, so Jonah, Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Do you think Jonah learned his lesson? You know what? It's better off, our life is better, that if we just do what the Lord tells us to do in the first place. If we just do what's in this book, 
our life will be better in the first place, no matter how hard it is, right? He was going into the heart of his enemy, and I'm sure when you go, he went into the heart, the capital city of the Assyrian Empire, a Hebrew, they hated them. He went into the heart of his enemy and started preaching against them, said, if you don't repent from your wicked deeds, God's going to destroy you in 40 days. That can be a bad thing. That's what caused Jonah to leave and flee from the presence of the Lord and say, no, Lord, I ain't doing this in the first place. But you see what happened. So if we would do what God told us to do in the first place, it's going to be less painful than probably the alternative, all right, than, than the pit, than our path that we choose. All right, there's always a path. There's God's path, God's way of doing things, and what God wants us to do, and our path, okay? No, God doesn't punish us anymore because this is in the Old Covenant because all judgment was placed on Jesus Christ at the cross and our sins are paid for. As far as the East, the Bible says, as far as the East is from the West, so far has he removed your sins, your transgressions from you, from you because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That all judgment and punishment was placed on Jesus at the cross. Read Isaiah 53 over and over again and get a good revelation on that. So, but our past still, choosing what God chooses to do, that's where life is. That's where the right things to do. God tells you to do one thing, not, not because it earns his love or his favor, but this is the good thing to do. So do what God tells you to do. Do his word, as in James, the, book of, the whole book of James, says be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, okay? God loves you. Do what he calls us to do. So, I think I'm going to end with there. So I'm just going to tell you again, or I want to uh, tell you that the, the gospel, Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God. You're always going to hear me because I believe in this. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that he completed, he fulfilled the law, that he was the payment for our sins, that that he reconciled, that God was in Christ reconciling us to himself, that the blood, of, he redeemed us through, we are redeemed through the blood of Christ, that we are justified, that we are holy, righteous, and above reproach and without blame before him, that we can, Hebrews chapter 4, I think, sorry, but we, but we can walk boldly up to the throne of grace and seek help in our time of need. We can cry out to God and help for help in our time of need. All right, so do this. I, I please do this. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Take a step toward Him. Draw near to God, and the Bible says He'll draw near to you. I can't tell you how much I love you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm glad that you're with me on this journey. That we can go through this together. That, that you can learn from my life and from the bad things that happened in my life. I love you guys. Bless you. Uh, meditate. Keep your nose in the Word of God. Uh, bless you guys. And I'll talk to you again next week on Freedom Friday.